Hi everyone, welcome to another Doug's Life video. In this video I'll be synthesizing chromal chloride, which has a molecular formula of CrO2Cl2, a uh, melting point of minus 96.5 Celsius, boiling point of 117, um, and this is going to be used in an upcoming video to oxidize some organic compounds, and also chromal chloride has a few interesting characteristics in and of itself. So today the chromal chloride is going to be made from potassium dichromate, sodium chloride, and sulfuric acid. And that's going to yield us our chromal chloride plus some sulfates, um, excess sulfuric acid, and some water. And I'll explain what's going on here. What happens is the sulfuric acid will react with the potassium dichromate to form chromic acid, and then dehydrate the chromic acid to its anhydride, which is chromium trioxide. At the same time, the sulfuric acid will react with sodium chloride to form sodium sulfate and hydrochloric acid. The hydrochloric acid, or hydrogen chloride, I should say, will react with the chromic anhydride here to form our chromal chloride and some excess water. Now this whole reaction here is a giant equilibrium because chromal chloride in turn will react with water to form both chromic anhydride and chromic acid as well as uh, hydrogen chloride. So to drive this reaction toward the products we need something to sequester this water and that's why so much hydro uh, that's why so much sulfuric acid excuse me is used in this reaction it's because sulfuric acid as you might know has a high affinity for water and will bind up this water and take it out of the equation which will drive the reactant or drive the reaction toward these products here and then we simply heat up to about 117 celsius to distill off the chromal chloride so let's get to it since this reaction requires equilibrium to be achieved before we begin to distill, we need to mix all of the reactants together as thoroughly as possible before we distill. So what we're going to do is first measure out uh, 46.75 grams of sodium chloride. This is non-iodized table salt. And we're going to grind it up into as fine a powder as we possibly can. I'm running this on a one-fifth molar scale based on the equation that you saw earlier. Once you get the salt crushed as finely as you can get it, and I prefer to buy flake salt because it crushes much easier than granular salt, um, you can transfer it into a separate container so you can then crush the potassium dichromate. Now begin to crush the potassium dichromate. You want to be very careful when you're crushing this because potassium dichromate contains chromium in the plus 6 oxidation state, also known as hexavalent chromium. Both the chromal chloride and the chromium trioxide for that matter and this potassium dichromate are all confirmed human carcinogens. So, Make sure you do this in a well-ventilated place so you don't get contaminated with dust and make sure you don't breathe any in. So I'm going to turn this fume hood fan on now. You don't have to worry about getting the mortar completely clean of salt when you do this because we're going to mix these two together in a minute anyway. It's advisable to wear gloves during this process so you don't contaminate yourself with chrome 6 or anything else that you touch afterward. However, potassium dichromate is water soluble, it can be washed off in the sink, and washing your hands with a mild reducing agent will effectively reduce any chrome 6 down to lower oxidation states of chromium, which are relatively harmless. So that's what I'll do when I'm done with this. Once you have both materials as a fine powder, you can combine the two together and then grind some more until they are completely homogenized. When the reactants are fully homogenized, transfer them to a clean, dry 500 milliliter round bottom flask that is free of organic contaminants. It's important that the whole setup is completely free of organic contaminants because chromal chloride is a very strong oxidizer and reacts very violently with many organic compounds.
Once the reactants are charged into the flask, set up for simple distillation. I have a 50 milliliter receiving flask here, since the theoretical yield of this synthesis should be about 33 milliliters of chromal chloride. Don't connect up the boiling flask yet, because we still need to add the sulfuric acid. I've weighed out 137.2 grams of sulfuric acid here. That corresponds to 100% sulfuric acid. The amount in this beaker weighs actually a little bit more, because I only have 93% sulfuric acid and I've compensated accordingly in weight. So if you have 98 or 95 percent sulfuric acid, you'll need to run your own calculations to decide how much you need to use. I'm going to place this in the freezer to cool down to about zero Celsius before we add it. Since the reaction produces water, the sulfuric acid will sequester the water and begin to heat the reaction. And we want to minimize this heating until we're ready to distill off the chromal chloride. So into the freezer it goes. The sulfuric acid is now cooled enough to be added safely to the mixture of potassium dichromate and sodium chloride. We want to add it all at once in one swift move, uh, being careful for gases that are going to be given off because hydrogen chloride is going to be generated along with chromal chloride and the heat will cause some to release from the flask. So you have to make sure you do this in a well-ventilated area with the fume hood on or outside on a windy day perhaps. Also make sure that the water jacket is active on your distillation apparatus because we're going to add the sulfuric acid and hook this up immediately to catch anything that might come over. So. Here we go. Cold sulfuric acid, potassium dichromate, sodium chloride mixture, add all at once. See the fuming? And then we're going to hook this up to our distillation apparatus. Now we want to make sure that all the constituents are evenly mixed before we begin to distill because we need to set up that equilibrium. If we have an excess of any of the components, we're going to lose yield. Also, the addition of extra water will reduce the yield. So if, you have, if you're using sulfuric acid of less than 98% concentration, expect not to, get, not to get the theoretical yield. So we're going to simply let this sit and make sure the sulfuric acid soaks all the components for a little while. And then we'll come back and begin to distill our chromal chloride. While we're waiting, it's always good lab practice to begin cleaning some of your apparatus up. Notice this cold beaker here used to contain sulfuric acid. It doesn't really look like anything, so I could easily grab it later, not knowing, and get some sulfuric acid on my hand, which is dangerous. So always make sure you clean up after yourself. You'll notice as you're waiting for these reactants to reach equilibrium that a brown gas will begin to fill the apparatus, and this gas will fume fairly heavily in air. You can see it here coming out of the out of this vacuum port here. Now this gas contains some chromal chloride because this is warm enough to boil off some chromal chloride. I can feel it through the flask. It's actually quite hot. However, this gas is mostly hydrogen chloride from the original reaction right here escaping because of a not very thorough mix between the potassium dichromate and sodium chloride. And the hydrogen chloride gas is moving up through the apparatus and taking some chromal chloride with it and then fuming when it hits the air and reacts with air with moisture in the air forming hydrochloric acid. So of course, make sure you don't breathe this because it not only contains hexavalent chromium but also hydrochloric acid. The reactants have now been sitting in the vessel for approximately 10 minutes, so it's about time to distill. We'll simply raise the heating mantle There we go, and turn on the heat. And in a few minutes, we'll begin to distill chromal chloride into this flask over here. As the reaction heats up, it will begin to foam slightly, and a blood red liquid will begin to condense in the condenser and drop into the receiver. This is the chromal chloride. Control the heating to control the foam. After several minutes of an initial outgas of HCl, chromal chloride will begin to distill over as a dark blood red liquid. You'll notice all the leaks in your joints because they'll fume in air. 
This is the chromal chloride hitting moisture in the air and reacting to form hydrochloric acid and chromium trioxide, which will collect on your joints. Remember this when you're taking your apparatus apart, because everything is dangerously reactive toward organic material and also extremely corrosive and carcinogenic. The end point of the reaction will be evidenced by a sudden clearing of the glassware. Notice how this has gone from a very blood red to a lighter color. The heating can then be stopped. We'll lower the heating mantle to prevent it from scorching the contents of the flask or driving any water off the sulfuric acid and contaminating our chromal chloride. And unfortunately I forgot to weigh the flask prior to this so we will not be able to calculate our yield. However that is a 50 milliliter flask that is a little over half full. So I'm assuming we got somewhere in the neighborhood of 25 to 30 milliliters of chromal chloride with a theoretical yield of 33 milliliters. Considering there's some in all these joints and a little bit here in the condenser, I'd expect this to be a nearly qualitative yield from the starting components. However, we were just unable to collect it all mechanically. All of the chromal chloride came over at about 112 Celsius, which pretty much corresponds to the 117 as predicted. And we'll now just begin the process of disassembling the apparatus. But first, as soon as the final drops of chromal chloride collect in the receiving flask, we will seal the flask quickly with a ground glass stopper and some fluoridated or some fluorocarbon grease, which is extremely resistant to oxidation. Remember, you don't want to use Vaseline or something because it'll catch fire when it comes in contact with this stuff. Also, keep in mind that it is toxic and carcinogenic and it reacts explosively with most organic compounds, so be extremely, extremely careful. When the apparatus has cooled down, it can be carefully disassembled, and its parts should be added to a bucket containing a reducing agent, such as ascorbic acid or sodium sulfite, to reduce the chrome-6 down to a different oxidation state, which is not carcinogenic. Everything cleans up easily with water, and the sulfuric acid, of course, needs to be paid special attention to and should be disposed of very carefully in a large amount of water, also containing a reducing agent, to reduce the chromium. I'll put a link in the description of this video to the preparation that I found for this chromal chloride. It's a free ebook, it's very old, but it's very useful and contains a lot of good preps. This is the final yield of chromal chloride. I've sealed it with a bit of fluoropolymer grease at the top to make sure that the chromal chloride doesn't escape, and this will be stored in the freezer to maintain its stability until we use it. So, that's my chromal chloride video. I hope you appreciated that. As always, thanks for watching. Please subscribe, like, and comment.